Hello. Hello. Welcome to this session. Uh, so this is the uh, surveillance 101. So this is everything you need to know. To, no, it's not. It's not. It's, it's something uh, slightly different. Um, but uh, I'm going to kick off with a, a little bit of a video. Yeah, he's not happy about that. <laughs> so why don't he just wear sunglasses? So, uh, so we'll come back to that. So, um, so I want to just give a bit of background to this presentation where it came from. Uh, so, if I can go to the next slide. Um, so, 2019, um, I was working for Alt. I just happened we were having a conversation with Jim Groom about OER. I think it was 19 and um, Jim Groom, nice guy, bit crazy, but um, I st started talking to him about a project that I had done with video surveillance and um, he was intrigued and he ended up inviting me to the domains conference in 2019. And this is essentially the presentation I gave uh, back then. It was in, uh, Raleigh, North Carolina or South Carolina. Um, so obviously then the pandemic hit. I had, I'd love to have done it in the UK, the talk. So, uh, but I, yeah, never happened. Now I have the opportunity to kind of um, reshare it to, to you and also update it in terms of uh, what, what's possible. Um, so, let me just go back to this. So, if you haven't kind of appreciated, there's quite a bit going on here and it's radiating quite a bit of heat as well. Uh, so someone might want to get a fire extinguisher just at the ready. Um, so this is where it started. This is the project I was talking to Jim about. So um, I've been very fortunate that a number of years ago, uh, I've done a lot of development in Google and uh, Google have a developers expert program. And as part of that, they pulled together different product areas. So there was a guy I met called uh, Nico Michelli. He's a Google analytics expert. So Google analytics, it's, you know, ca capturing um, website data, doing your analysis. Um, so 
the Google Analytics is actually a huge um, measurement machine. You're not restricted. It doesn't have to be websites. There's basically an API where you can ping events into it. And that's exactly what um, Nico did. He, he's got his Raspberry Pi, his Arduino board, a motion sensor, a couple of lines of code, and um, basically he got a baby monitor. Um, so he was using the motion sensor to send data in Google Analytics. Um, and, and I thought this was really interesting. And I think, you know, as alt values us exploring things, I wanted to explore it myself. It's probably the one project I've done that definitely got me more trouble than I wanted. Um, so I took my Raspberry Pi with this webcam and uh, there's an open source library called OpenCV, um, which is used for um, vision, vision processing. So I basically replicated what Nico did, um, but detecting faces. So this uh, is uh, DefS 2019. And we basically had this at the front of the audience all day, and we got a graph of how many people came in and out. The thing I wanted to stress to people, it was face detection. So it wasn't face recognition, you were just detecting faces. Um, but retrospectively, people were concerned about what, you know, also you know, throw in Google Analytics as well into the mix, people understandably concerned. But I think as part of this project, I, it made me think about the accessibility of this type of technology to people. So in terms of how to do that, it's essentially six lines of code with the OpenCV library. So in terms of other people doing this, and OpenCV is actually used in a lot of other places, uh, other applications. And there's a long history of us trying to explore um, what can be done with facial identification, detection, and so on going back to the 60s. So it's it's an area that's interested people for a long time. Um, so I can't remember if you your first digital camera to have that option to save your family members. And um, so it's essentially using OpenCV as a technology behind that. Obviously not everyone's gonna want to even six lines of code. They don't want to write six lines of code. Um, but the face has essentially turned into a service, which I think uh, increasingly with the other conversations we're having now around AI, I think is quite interesting. I think there's, in terms of what happened with face detection, face recognition, which was you know around 2019, and the response to that, I think we're seeing similar sort of conversations around AI in general. Um, so looking back, to look forward. So face as a recognition service. So basically other people taking something like OpenCV or their own version of it and putting it in the cloud and then developers can basically use it as a service, API calls. So there's a couple here. Um, some of them are more scarier than others as I'll, I'll, I'll show you. Um, but I thought do a bit of playful stuff with this. So um, do we have any volunteers who are happy to have their identity pass to Google? We've got one. I need a couple. Yeah, yeah. Excellent. So we're going to play Domain Invaders. Uh, so, right. if we, so if you want, guys want to come up here, I'll just... So we're going to look sad into the camera. There we go. So sad faces. Now we're going to shuffle that way slightly. We're going to do a happy face. Performative okay. emotion. <laughs> so there we are. We are domain invading. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you very much. We need that for our socials now. <laughs> uh, I've got a download option here, so I'm just going to download it. Um, so all this is using is the webcam, and it's making a call 
to the Google Vision API. So the Google Vision API, um, anyone can sign up to use it as a service. Google quite happy to take the money and run essentially. But in terms of, like, just jump into here. So it, it's analyzing the faces and it's looking at various aspects. So emotions uh, and basically coming back with uh, a threshold, you know, I, you know, is this person happy? Is this person sad? Um, and Dom, thank you, Dom, for this pick. <laughs> Do you remember this one? Was this Eden? Um, so I've never gone to this point, you know, I've obviously, I've, like, I've made domain invaders. Um, but, you know, this, this, around this time of, because there was lots of um, press items, you know, around this technology and people considering or speculating or suggesting how that technology might be used. Um, so, which is quite, you know, I've, I look back at this and it's quite disturbing really that we're, what do we, you know, what do we learn by this? What, you know, um, but I think as part of this kind of, you see these small scale examples, which hopefully go nowhere. But at the other side of the spectrum, you've got something very different happening. So in terms of training these models, there are various data sets out there. So this is one 100, uh, 10 million celebrity faces that have been coded. Um, and there's various of these data sets lying around. Um, What's quite interesting, can people remember, I think it was around ooh, two, 2019, news stories, um, it was, in terms of timing, it was slightly ironic because it kind of kicked off at the Creative Commons conference in Lisbon, this idea that uh, big companies were basically taking uh, Flickr data that was Creative Commons and using it to train their models. So the issue with that, though is it had nothing to do with the Creative Commons license. Um, what had happened was a researcher was looking for a large data set, thought I'll go to Flickr, and then thought they would do the good thing of taking Creative Commons licensed images. But fair use doctrine means that they didn't, it could be fully copyrighted images that they could digest and use. And I think Given the current conversations that we have around AI, you know, I think we're, we're still at that point where anyone can just point something, uh, particularly if you're in the US, and just suck that data up. So we, we still, even now, don't, I feel, have controls that prevent that from happening, which is quite disturbing. Uh, and yeah, I can, I'm contributing to the data set. Um, I'm tagging myself. We're all tagging ourselves, just helping uh you know the next model along if you're interested in finding out um the different data sets that are available um and how they're being used there's a really good project it was originally funded by mozilla and it's still going today exposing ai so they they basically catalog public data sets um mostly image based um so you, you know if you want to read more about the oxford town center data set with 2,200 identities or the Duke University data set, they're trying to expose and make people aware of what's happening in terms of the data that's available. Um, meanwhile, over in China, I think there's alarming signs of where this potentially can go if it's not properly legislated. Um, she goes social credit what she buys how she behaves if tracked and scored to show how responsible and trustworthy she is it's called the social credit system and in one version now being tested a person's reputation is scored on a scale of 350 to 950 
and how you, with a good score of 752, is okay with it. In fact, most people are. Is there a mechanism like uh, pushes you to become a better citizen? It's big data meets big brother expanding how the government monitors, understands, and ultimately controls its 1.4 billion citizens. Thanks to advances in artificial intelligence and facial recognition, and a web of more than 200 million surveillance cameras. Are people bothered by privacy concerns? I think uh, the lack of camera keep the safety is really good. We can accept it. Companies are experimenting with the algorithms to help the government create a new national social credit system. The government also has pilot projects. In one, citizens are required to do hours of unpaid work to get benefits, and scores are docked for things like littering, a messy yard, gossip, even jaywalking. Video of offenders is shown on the local news. Have, have you come across social credit before? I see some um, social, so again, this is another one of those stories that was big in 2019, and it's gone quiet since then, up until I think it was 2022. And the legislation suddenly appeared on the Chinese website that they were going to make this law. So, uh, Dom, did you have a question? Uh, so Chinese social credit scores are affected. Really? <laughs> <laughs> So um, if your, your university ranking, or rather the other way around, if your university ranking is one of the networks that feed into the credit cards, and therefore you may get fewer Chinese students if you get a low and accessible. Oh, I did not know that. Yeah. So was it the NAS score that determines the university ranking and the social credit? The university, universities of the nation against the odds of the things, the NS is the main right that didn't the one. So if you're a postgraduate institute, and you're also a better client, you can't go to face I did not know that. Yeah, no, no. Thank you for that. So obviously, China, you know, as part of their social credit system, they're not only developing the tools and mechanisms to do this, but they're generating the data as well. Um, so this is one, one of the Chinese um, facial recognition software uh, called Skynet. <laughs> just, just going to make it slightly more obvious, uh, as featured in Terminator. Uh, so I don't know if that's just like a really crazy joke or uh, so, Anyway, you can find that more about that on, it's on the New York Times. So um, I think it's a reliable source. Um, so it's quite alarming in terms of without regulation and actually state sponsorship in this area, just what can happen. So, and you know, it's not just social credit, they're, they're using this technology in, in various aspects. Um, uh, I think, uh, there's one in particularly where, you know, you're talking about um, imposing, you know, state control on um, toilet paper. Uh, <laughs> uh, but there's another one, you know, in terms of um, minorities. So monitoring minorities. So again, we were getting into really kind of scary territory in terms of what, what they're potentially doing with this technology. Um, and you know, it's not just in public spaces, it's in supermarkets. Um, so, uh, you know, the extent is quite massive. Kind of flipping across to the US, you know, this similar, uh, you know, the face as a service has been used in various ways. So, um, again, around 2019, stories started emerging around you know things like using it to detect people at concerts and i think that there was this period where there was a vacuum of legislation and regulation that didn't restrict this in any way so you know there, there was there was nothing there um you know 
similar to kind of social credit, you know, starting to trickle down into other parts of people's lives. Um, so the wheels did start turning. So people did start wanting to put the brakes on this. Um, so there were a number of uh, small victories. Sometimes it was state. Um, California was particularly on the ball in terms of starting to protect uh, people's, uh, you know, their concerns around this. Um, and then at a similar sort of time, we, we got this kicking off in the UK. Do you remember this? So, oh, let me go back. The front line in facial recognition. Police cameras in an East London street, everyone gets scanned. We refuse, here's what can happen. Richard didn't want to be caught by the police cameras, so he covered his face. They stopped him, they photographed him anyway, an argument followed. <laughs> The, the fact that they walk past the police said this was disorderly behaviour, so they gave them a fine. <laughs> so Met Police and um, South Wales Police just started, um, let's see if I can get this on the slide. And at the time, there, there was guidance on use of surveillance, but it, it wasn't, there was a lack, there was this legislation hall in terms of usage. So they went to court, um, South Wales police actually lost the case. Um, and as a response, so the original guidance published in 2013 was updated as a response to the findings from the court case. So in some way, you know, it's good, I suppose, that uh, legislation caught up, but there, you know, there was that period where we're in the unknown in terms of what's going to happen next, who's right, who's wrong. The other aspect of this, I think, just to think about is legislation can work for us, but it can also work against us. So burqa bans which are surprisingly, <laughs> in terms of the number of countries in Europe that have some sort of burqa ban, so preventing the wearing of the veil in public places or schools is quite actually widespread. So my fear is that we start legislation against, you know, covering our faces or uh, wearing sunglasses. <laughs> um, so I think it's definitely something that we as public have to keep our uh, politicians where we want to be. But I think, you know, the danger is back to, if you think back to that um, social credit piece, it was like more cameras will make people feel safe. Um, and I think that's the danger that people will lean towards, oh, I want to feel safe than actually um, having the freedom of expression to, uh, you know, cover their face if they want to in public, to walk in public places without fear of being captured by cameras and then processed. Um, and just thinking about this quite recently, within my town, there's a, a group of youths that have started hanging around the medical center and started abusing the staff there. And a lot of the immediate response is, oh, let's put surveillance cameras in. But actually, what's that? They're just gonna move on to another place. 
what we need to do is invest in why those people feel that they can do that um, and deal with the, the root problem. So this, you know, this back to Audrey Waters, 2014. So my position on this is, um, like the Luddites, it's uh, it's not necessarily the technology, but it's it's when we get to a point where we're no longer caring about this, how the technology is being applied, that we seriously need to start rethinking what we want to do with it. And there are actually positive uses of face detection and um, use of video surveillance that I think we have to keep in mind. It's not all negative. So Karos is uh, one of the companies I showed you face as a service. So this is something that they've put together in terms of just showing uh, positive benefits of facial recognition. So, um, you know, it's not just humans, it can be animal welfare as well. And this is quite an interesting one. So um, Scope published a report recently in terms of assistive technology and gamers. Um, and it's a barrier for a lot of people in terms of it's very expensive equipment um, and you know, hard to install, hard to access. So Google have come up with um, GameFace. So it's uh, basically a, a downloadable piece of software, uses your webcam, can use your eye motion, your expression in your faces to allow you to have a game controller, essentially. So I think they're definitely, you know, it, it's not a black and white. And I think, I think in this room, I think we all know technology is not neutral. We, we can decide how it's used, how it's applied, and make sure that we have the restrictions that we need in place to prevent the bad stuff. Um, so I just want to a final piece of art. Uh, who, who's familiar with They Live? <laughs> Problem. Yeah, 
So if you take one thing away from this presentation, make sure we can always wear sunglasses. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, so final one. So final, uh, if I can get it on. So final little experiment. So um, I mentioned Karos. Oh, have I broken everything? It was gonna happen, wasn't it? <laughs> and for, hopefully I can run on and save the day. Yes, I can. Uh, did you see the video? Was it working? Good, 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 good. Uh, so final little experiment. Um, so uh, I'm going to, they live myself. So uh, sunglasses off. So um, this is the data that comes back from Karos. Uh, so I don't know if you can see it, but it's got my uh, ethnicity value. Um, but the other thing, it can detect if you're wearing glasses or not. So glasses on. Glasses on or off? <laughs> Go on, I've got, I've got 11 of these, so on or off? Oh. On, okay. On or off? off. On or off? Oh, it's, it's not always, it's not always uh, correct. We do one um, off. Oh, my eyes have gone turned into sunglasses. <laughs> See, well, don't don't use the Carol service. It's terrible <laughs> and evil. Look, <laughs> It's the late night. I'm going to blame the late night. Um, so let's go back here. Uh, so what? Um, it's messy. Right? Um, but ultimately, I think, you know, it. I think it's useful, I think, to be aware of what's going on in terms of uh, both the technology and the legislation and how they play together as part of this. And I think, it, you know, thinking about some of the conversations we're increasingly have, having again now around AI, I think looking at how we can respond quickly and proactively to that to protect us. Uh, and that's me. Thank you for your time. Uh, <laughs> I welcome any thoughts, reflections, or discussion. Fallible is the technology, like, you know, like, I've got a big hairy beard. Yeah, I yeah. Be, like, confused with somebody else that can shut them and slam them until the computer stops saying no. I, I think that's, um, is, as you've seen with the, the, the sunglasses mm. piece, it, you know, and I think that's one of the issues, and I think, useful to look at when the Met were using this technology, there was some data pub published about successful you know, arrests. The numbers were relatively low in terms of, but you know, given the thousands of people that they detected. So um, I think currently not, not high, but as we see larger data sets, more compute, higher resolution cameras, um, I, I think, you know, it, they can make it better, <laughs> which is a bit worrying.
It's uh, universities own the news and uh, publish a lot of it, which is all places. Um, they do that in all kinds of settings. Um, yeah. They don't release the stories publishing the news for purposes and which they're not currently um, collected. Is there a sense in which we need to see? Um, you actually need to take yeah. I, I think personally, I'm conscious that I'm sharing less images of myself online um, in a public forum, but my Google Photos is just a huge data bank of me, my life, my family. Um, and um, I've, you know, I've kind of accepted Google are probably mining that the hell out of that. Um, and Google actually got into issues with the algorithms it's using with Google Photos and biases that it had. Um, so it's obviously refining that model with the data that it has. So I, I don't know what the answer is. It's like I, and you know, it's not just photos. It's all medium or, or media is potentially mineable now. Um, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, don't. Hmm. Uh, yeah, because <laughs> I protect you know, recently Google put me on trusted tester programs. I, so I've, I've seen what they've, they've got in store. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um i suppose what i'm less fearful of this particular area and there, there are think other areas i'm more concerned about in terms of the, of the future i mean burning to death is probably the one that, that's top of my list i think the the thing it is making our government work for us in terms of this so in the case of the south wales police the courts worked in terms of found that they had gone beyond what they should have done. Government worked in updating the legislation, but it's, it's that lag, it's that time delay. You, you need due process, um, but it's out of line with how quickly technology is changing. So it's always on the back foot. Um, so that's that's the concern. Yeah. And also, what behaviors and uh, policies are sort of normalized in the first event? So, you know, people get used to their data being used to do a lot of other things. I'm thinking about that guy who's covering his face up. Yeah. Why yeah. would people do it? Why would yeah. people just aren't aware of some of that assessment? I, I think it. it... Well, yeah. I think is part of it is, you know, back to that uh, social credit is that I've got nothing to fear. The cameras are there to protect me. Um, so I think there is a danger of falling into that headspace of um, thinking it, it's 
it's you know it's it's going to save me it's going to make my life better um but it could go to the point of social credit and it's not there So we don't hide our face and say that because those people for whom it's not very safe, we actually see them in their minds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm, yeah. But whether we feel safe or not, we mm. have a act of citizenship. There's a, there's a reason to do it. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Mm, it's a very good point. <laughs> yeah, come on. You say that uh, yeah, the problem is worse for the black and white, but that's kind of inevitable because mm. until the technology has been invented, I yeah. can't correct that. But what I'm interested in the university sector is uh, even when the problem increases, we up this conversation. We still, as institutions, have to find our own versions of that. Yeah. I'm just thinking, lecture, lecture, for instance. Yeah. Back to my head, we still haven't made it properly. We uh, have these conditions that students sign up to without ever reading them, mm -hmm. that uh, they will be recorded and uh, mm. they might be incidental and their faces are more than what the students are more than what Yeah, yeah. You know, students. Yeah. And you know, when we then bring her to these fake conditions of my colleagues researching in multiple development analytics, which is coming for the next mm. few years, where we then also have appropriate gestures and how people interact and are able to do mm. with these visualizations. And this is going to be important. Yeah. And yeah, institutions have a role have a really hard time. I th it's interesting as well um in terms of the balance because uh, i was working on a project and we did a um a quality impact assessment of video capture and looking at who it could potentially benefit of people who had other life commitments or mobility issues um so it's it's not a simple black and white or which i think is the, the tricky bit but um so it's balancing the rights of the individuals with benefits for the individuals Do we give them one more <laughs> thank you